to a free press, to an informed citizenry, to an America where freedom and democracy endure. I would really like to take a moment to recognize all the print journalists in this room. Your words speak truth to power. Your words bring light to the darkness. And I was standing here quietly with this sign and got so roughed up by the security and thrown out of the hotel. You journalists, come over here. Hello, journalists, come here. We're being assaulted for First Amendment right of free speech. Help! Help us, please. Help! Help us. You better not be putting your hands on us. You better not be putting your hands on us. It's quite ironic because tonight was all about press, press freedom, and it seems like standing here with the sign is something that's a lot worse than a hundred journalists in Gaza being killed. Over the weekend, members of the ruling class convened for the annual White House Correspondents' Dinner, where elites in media and politics spend hours huffing each other's farts and jerking themselves off about how wonderful and self-important they are. And as insufferable as this event is every single year, this year was particularly grating, especially for me. I think it's because their self-importance rang especially hollow this year, given what's happening in the world and the way that they have responded to and reported on what's happening in the world. And as you saw, anyone who attended this event was shamed by anti-genocide protesters because self-respecting journalists shouldn't be drinking wine with a president and chumming it up with an administration that is enabling a regime that has murdered more than 100 journalists in Gaza. So people were calling for journalists to boycott this event because of that fact. And those people didn't. And their attendance was effectively seen as an endorsement of this administration's actions. But it gets worse because, as the Rolling Stone points out, these hypocritical Cretans couldn't even be bothered to mention the journalists that were killed in Gaza, with one exception. A brief mention by Kelly O'Donnell of NBC News. The Nation explains, Save for a brief mention by O'Donnell, who said since October, about 100 journalists have been killed, most of those deaths in Gaza, while pointedly not saying how those journalists had died or who had killed killed them, the people who have paid such a high price for their commitment to reporting in Gaza were almost invisible at the gala. This is despite the fact that some of these reporters' own peers have been killed or harmed. So these people are fucking pathetic. And as they're all laughing on the inside and having a good time, they're pretending as if they're not being protested for their complicity on the outside. They're not only detached from reality, but from morality too. And if they're ever perplexed as to why trust in media among the American people is so low, things like this explain why. And I'd be remiss to just cite the number of journalists killed in Gaza without the additional context because the details themselves are stunning. This is not something that we typically see. The nation continues, according to the Committee to Protect Journalists, the climate for journalists in Gaza is the most lethal in modern history. At the end of 2023, the group reported that more journalists were killed in the first 10 weeks of the Israel-Gaza war than have ever been killed in a single country over an entire year. 2024 has been similarly harrowing. Out of the 19 journalists CPJ has reported killed across the world so far this year, all but one were from Gaza. So it's evident that a lot of the journalists there don't care about the ethnic cleansing or the thousands of children that have been killed, but out of their own self-interest, at least, you would think that they'd care about the journalists being targeted by this criminal regime. But they're apparently not because they're at this event with Biden, who's not only assisting the guy doing the murdering of these journalists and committing a genocide, he's also trying to stop any accountability from coming Netanyahu's way. For example, as Common Dreams reports, the Biden administration is trying to stop the International Criminal Court from issuing a warrant for the arrest of the guy committing those crimes against humanity. So Biden clearly doesn't care about journalists, but I mean, that didn't stop him from talking about how important journalism is at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. He actually did. I'm not joking. So he had the absolute audacity to talk about the importance of journalism and criticize Trump and Russia's treatment of journalists while saying fuck all about Israel's treatment of journalists. Let's watch. 
That's why I want to close the night with my genuine thanks to the free press. There are some who call you the enemy of the people. That's wrong and it's dangerous. You literally risk your lives doing your job. You do. Covering everything from natural disasters to pandemics to wars and so much more. And some of your colleagues have given their lives. And many have suffered grievous injuries. Other reporters have lost their freedom. Journalism is clearly not a crime, not here, not there, not anywhere in the world. And Putin should release Evan and also immediately. Just we're doing everything we can. We're doing everything we can to bring home journalists, fellow journalists, Austin, and all Americans like Paul Will, you know, who wrongfully detained all around the world. And I give you my orders to Biden. We're not going to give up until we get them home. All of them. All of them. Unbelievable. Journalism is not a crime, not here, not there, not anywhere in the world. Yet here he is arming and funding a genocidal regime that has killed more than 100 journalists, including American journalists, by the way. Just shameless. It's not just tone deaf. I think that's an understatement. It is despicable. It's deceitful. And this man has no fucking credibility whatsoever. I'm so sick and tired of hearing about the importance of international law and international norms and the importance of journalism and human rights when he is continuing to make exceptions for Israel time and time. Either you care about international law and human rights and journalism or you don't, right? But you have to apply that standard to everyone, but he's not doing that. So I don't want to hear from Joe Biden about journalism and human rights and international law ever again. Shut the fuck up about that so long as you're going to continue to arm and fund Netanyahu and defend him from accountability at the International Criminal Court. So, I mean, if you're a journalist at this event, you're supporting that double standard effectively, right? By sitting there and laughing, you are supporting that. Now, there were all kinds of journalists there, including conservative journalists from Fox News, and I use the word journalist charitably when I'm talking about Fox News people. But if you're dissatisfied with an administration, you can just not go. You can, you can choose to boycott that. But they were there, too. They can't help themselves because I think that they care more about being in proximity to people with power than actual principles. Although I could understand if somebody wanted to attend the event so that way they could make a statement and actually speak truth to power. That's happened in the past, especially when it comes to the comedian guests. And we'll get, get to that in a moment. But I mean, that was not the case with this year's event. The comedy at this year's event was... Uh, Milk Toast and the actual comedian who spoke, Colin Jost of Saturday Night Live. I mean, I don't even know what to say about it. It was an embarrassment. Sure, he threw some mild jabs in here and there for Biden, you know, because of his age and his bad polling numbers in swing states. But by and large, this was one of the most grossest displays of sycophancy I think I've ever seen. And he literally can't comprehend why Biden is polling so terribly. For example, listen to this comment in particular. The Republican candidate for president owes half a billion in fines for bank fraud and is currently spending his days farting himself awake during a porn star hush money trial and the race is tied? It's because he's doing a genocide. Democrats winning elections always comes down to how successful they are at mobilizing their own base, especially young people. But Biden has made it abundantly clear that he's not going to change. And young people have made it abundantly clear that they're not going to support Joe Biden so long as he continues to be complicit with Netanyahu's genocide in Gaza. And the approval rating of Biden's handling of Gaza among young people reflects that. So since Biden is refusing to stop supporting a genocide, the young people who voted for him in 2020 are choosing to not support him this time as well. It's not rocket science, right? I feel like we can all understand why Biden is currently doing bad. He's not changing anything. And politicians like John Fetterman, for example, haven't acknowledged the fact that shaming people into supporting Biden and badgering them isn't going to work. If it did, we wouldn't have had Trump the first time because it would have worked with Hillary Clinton. But I mean, to call in Jost, the comedian, he just can't understand this. He doesn't comprehend why young people are dissatisfied with Biden because his perception of Biden is very different than the perception of young people who are angry with him for doing a genocide, as demonstrated by this part where he talks about his dead grandfather. 
He voted for you, and the reason that he voted for you is because you're a decent man. My grandpa voted for decency, and decency is why we're all here tonight. Decency is how we're able to be here tonight. So, Mr. President, I thank you for your decency on behalf of my grandfather, and I thank all of you, almost all of you, <laughs> for your decency as well. Colin, why don't you just get down on your hands and knees and start licking his boots while you're at it? I mean, he's right there. You might as well. You're already basically doing that. I just, I don't understand why you even chose to share that. Well, you know, even though you're doing a genocide, my dead grandfather voted for you because you're decent, and if he thinks you're decent, then it must be true. Okay, cool. Because boomers basing their votes on civility and respectability as opposed to policy is so fucking rare. I mean, that's part of the reason why we're in this mess in the first place, right? Because too many people prioritize how somebody talks and how they sound as opposed to the policy. The journalists in that room are unwilling to criticize Biden because he uses nice flowery words and they don't look at his actions, right? But there's nothing decent about a man aiding and abetting an ethnic cleansing and a genocide. I don't care if Biden does it in, in the nicest way possible, right? He can put little heart stickers on the bombs that he's giving to Israel. There's nothing decent about a man who is assisting a war criminal with the mass murder of innocent people in Gaza. Now, look, I'll be extra charitable here and assume that Colin has just been living under a rock or in a cave for the past couple of months, and he doesn't know that Biden is culpable with the war crimes being committed in Gaza. Well, if that's the case, assuming he's the dumbest person, most ignorant person on the planet, maybe all of the protesters that he had to walk past to get there should have alerted him to the fact that maybe something's seriously wrong, right? Perhaps these people aren't there for no reason. Maybe they have a legitimate reason to be protesting this administration. I don't know. But I mean, part of the problem this year was that in a year when this administration is so detached from the public, same is true for the media, you really should be more self-deprecating if you're going to even hold this event, which you shouldn't, but you shouldn't take yourself so seriously. But they did. And that makes it so much worse, in my opinion. Now, believe it or not, previous comedians who were in Colin's position actually challenged the media and criticized the administrations that were in power at these events. Because if you have the opportunity to speak truth to power, why not do that? I mean, take Colbert in 2006 and uh, Michelle Wolf in 2018 as examples. These are just small examples of what they did to criticize the people in power in that room. But the rest of you, what are you thinking? Reporting on NSA wiretapping or secret prisons in Eastern Europe? Those things are secret for a very important reason. They're super depressing. <laughs> and if that's your goal, well, misery accomplished. Over the last five years, you people were so good over, uh, over, over tax cuts, WMD intelligence, the effect of global warming. We Americans didn't want to know, and you had the courtesy not to try to find out. Those were good times as far as we knew. <laughs> but listen, let's review the rules. Here's how it works. The president makes decisions. He's the decider. The press secretary announces those decisions. And you people of the press, type those decisions down. Make, announce, type. Just put them through a spell check and go home. Get to know your family again. Make love to your wife. Write that novel you got kicking around in your head. You know, the one about the intrepid Washington reporter with the courage to stand up to the administration? You know, fiction. And of course we have Sarah Huckabee Sanders. We are graced with Sarah's presence tonight. I have to say, I'm a little starstruck. I love you as Aunt Lydia and The Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> Mike My Pence, if you me. haven't seen it, you would love it. I actually really like Sarah. I think she's very resourceful. Like she burns facts and then she uses that ash to create a perfect smoky eye. <laughs> like maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's lies. It's probably lies.
Look, I would prefer that the White House Correspondents' Dinner just never happened again because I think that it is unnecessary and it's stupid. But if it is going to happen, those are the things that you can do to make it more impactful, right? You can call out the people in power and bring attention to the way that the media, the same people in that room, manufactured consent for Bush's Iraq invasion. You can call out the lies of this administration, as Michelle Wolf did. I mean, Colin Josh chose to just suck off Joe Biden. Imagine if he talked about how Biden is complicit with genocide or called out the way that the media has been lying about anti-war protesters on college campuses. Instead, he chose to do none of that. He said a lot of words, but none of it was substantive. He chose to just grovel at the feet of the powerful and there is nothing more pathetic than that. It was nauseating. So in case you can't tell, I absolutely fucking despise these people. I hate them with every fiber of my being. The journalists defaming anti-war protesters on college campuses across the country are yucking it up with the president protecting a prime minister who's murdering journalists. And it's just, it's all so phony and over the top and illegitimate, but their heads are too far up their own asses to hear the protesters shaming them. So, you know, even if, even if they heard them, they don't have the capacity for shame, so I just had to rant about this because it was really fucking insufferable, in my opinion. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.